Hey everybody, it's Ted from Mob Rules. Um, I, uh, today is a big day because if you watch the other video, then you know that I'm excited for your today's release, um, which is like, I don't know, four or five days ago if you're watching this when I release it, whenever I release this video. But I'm excited! So Ted in the past, from when you watch this video, is excited about this release that just came out today. Um, and of course, if you're on the other side of the world, chances are you got it yesterday, but it'd be one more day. Anyway. Um, so I get this thing, and it is a brick, dude. Like, there's a lot of plastic in this. Here, I'll do it this way so it's a tease, because you didn't look at the title of the video before you started watching it, so you don't know what I'm talking about. Oh my god! Um, Custode Bikes. This is the, uh, the Virtus, uh, Praetors? I think they said the Predators, but I could have been wrong. Not these are Predators, but the guys on top are Predators. Maybe Praetors is the um, Greek word for, or, uh, uh, I don't know. It's Maybe it means Predator? I don't know. Let's look that up. Uh, wiki this or and, and tell me if it means Predator or not. Um, so I'm super jazzed. We have uh, jet bikes. I've been collecting like old jet bikes for a long time um, for no good reason. Uh, I don't know why. Like I'm sure if they ever come out with Space Marine jet bikes again outside of this and the Corvus, they're probably gonna look amazing and a lot better than the old Rogue Trader ones, but I still have a bunch anyway. So not that that really matters to you, um, except to contextualize this with I like jet bikes uh, and marine jet bikes. So anyway, um, this is really super exciting. I'm, I'm really looking forward to putting this together uh, and seeing what it looks like and painting them for you. Last time it took a million years to paint that one Terminator. Um, granted, I was taking a lot of time, but trying to get the lights right and everything else and record it and then contemplate my next move and... <sighs> but I do it because I love you. And the attention. Love you and the attention. So... Um, let's go ahead and put one of these together, strategize how we want to paint it, because I'm guessing we're probably not going to paint it like as one piece. We're probably going to do multiple pieces, um, because that's how these work anymore. And then, that's it. Alright, let's take a look. Boom, boom, boom. I mean, really, it's so full. I mean, I guess maybe the, uh, just put it in a smaller box that I'm used to. Also, I don't know if you've noticed, but uh, like the sprues these days are full of stuff. Whereas like, I remember, I mean, if you go and get like the old, uh, well, not old, they're still current, but the the scouts, like it's really sparse, they're piece and piece and piece. I hear it's like all jumbled together, uh, one big mix. So um, yeah, let's take a look at this. Uh, uh, there we go. Clear bases, um, I'm curious, I don't know, I'm, I'm not sure if I want to do clear bases or not. Oh, cool! Just as I was about to say, I don't know if I want to do those. It came with oval bases, that's rad. Oh man, okay. Cool, so if you want to, you can do oval bases, you don't have to. Oh, look at that! Uh, it's cute, it has a knobber. That's awesome. You can have them banking or whatever, I don't know, is that a relatively new piece? I haven't seen it on anything else but I don't know I haven't always been keeping up um okay so let's take a take a gander uh gotta move all the other custodes and demons we got laying around all right orientate it towards you okay so here we have the <laughs> then I unorientate it um the main bikey bit the saddle that thing is huge Oh my gosh, uh, that is much bigger than a Space Marine bike, I and mean, that's, yeah, I don't know. Um, okay, it looks like we have a hand that is molded to a, uh, a yoke. Would you call them a yoke, or handlebars? Uh, okay, so there's your missiles. So missiles will slot in behind these guys, I imagine. Uh, nope, right there. There was a slot in there. Um, my hope was that we'd see the eagle separately, because uh, I want to make a Custodes Dreadnought without buying the Forge World one, because I already have a couple Forge World ones, and I don't want to... Anyway, um, so I'm looking for extra bits. Oh, there's the spear. Damn, that thing is huge. Holy crap. And it is, is it molded to a hand? Yep, there's some fingers. There's a thumb. That thing is a beast. Okay, so then it just glues right there. Um, some other 
greaves. Uh, I like the top of that. So this is probably just one guy. Oh, it is just one guy. They have put the entire guy on one sprue, right? No. Yes. Yes. They put one guy on the sprue. So I wonder if you'll be able to buy them independently. Um, I like the big exhaust ports. It kind of has like an orc bike kind of feel to it. Um, let's see, chest, back, uh, hips. What is that? That's probably underside. It's the top side of the hood. Um, yeah, so there's the hurricane bolters. This is gonna be kind of a pain in the ass, to be honest. It's gonna be kind of a pain in the ass. No, maybe it won't. Um, because here's like the, the cloak is multiple pieces, and that kind of maybe it's not. Maybe it just flows out each side. That's probably it. So it's not gonna be that bad. So what we'll probably end up doing, we could probably get away with painting it, putting it together. Maybe the front end, the back end. No, we could just do the. We'll airbrush the whole thing gold, and then we could probably just like hand brush the silver parts in between. Leave the rider separate. A lot of his gold is on his upper torso, so we could probably, if we really want, anyway, we, if we wanted to, we could probably, oh, because the legs are purple too, in this case, so we are going to need to paint him separately. Okay, anyway, they get complicated as they get older. <laughs> um, okay, just real quick, let's see, helmeted head. It's kind of neat. I, I appreciate that they're keeping the necks consistent so that you can swap the heads out. So if you have like an unhelmeted head or a character full head that you want to throw in there, you can. Um, let's see. Da -da. Okay, so the hips are, are different. I remember the other hips had a hole in there. Okay, so it looks like they're gonna, there will be some variance to the model. It's not going to all just be static, which is good. <laughs> we need variants. Um, so really, I think, oh, there, that's what I was looking for. So, the helmetless head. If you know me, you know I love helmetless heads. I'm not always using them, but the idea that they're there it gives your character's character. Uh, and then, of course, we have the helmeted head. I wonder if we have any extra doodly bits. Okay, it looks like the same shoulder pads as before. So nothing new there. Um, let's see, this one, oh, okay, I'm gonna look at the straight arm, and that looks like the arm is just straight up molded onto there, versus, uh, that's also a straight arm. I wonder what the difference is. The angle, this one is a little bit more kicked off to the side, I think, and this one is kind of more angled directly ahead, and then we have this one that's kind of bent. That's cool. Okay, good. So we got a little bit of variety. So there's not a lot of extra options, it appears. Looks like it's, do you want missiles not, I mean missiles or bolters? And then do you want that one guy to have a helmetless head or not? So we're kind of running thin on options. Darn, I was hoping that we'd have some leftovers for the Dreadnought. Oh well, I'll cry about it later. So, oh, 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 wait, wait, wait. No, no, no. I was going to say that it looks like there's other options, but it looks as though that's the, the front fin and the rear fin. So we don't have extra fins. <laughs> Big tears. Okay, so we'll put one of these two guys together and get back to you. Okay, so something that I noticed uh, was that actually these... Uh, these guns clip in there really nicely and easily. Um, I put a magnet in there, but you really don't need it. Um, I think like once you have them going, uh, there's kind of like a snap kind of fit almost. Um, oh my gosh, here it is, okay. But I'm gonna put the, the magnets on there anyway. So um, yeah, I just took a slight sliver. I think this is like seven centimeters or 0.7 millimeters wide and then just glue it in there with a magnet on the back and that kind of just fits in there nicely um i don't know what i'm going to use i'm thinking hurricane bolters are the way to go but you never know you need that uh that punch for some vehicle destructies 
Anyway, give that a shot. Well, here it is in parts. Um, let's see what we look at first. So we got the bike. Hello, bike. Um, yeah, I got a little bit of putty in there. Uh, I'd actually probably put some in there permanently because I'd, I'd noticed that, and maybe it's, I mean, it seems like it's a, I got together pretty tight, but there's still a little bit of, there's a lot of play. So if you just throw a little bit of putty, or if you plan on gluing it, I think that's, that's good too. I think uh, with these guys, I'm not going to stick with these. I'm going to uh, use the biker bases. Um, but in the meantime, there's some putty. So, uh, yeah, I I think it went together really nicely. I think for the most part, I really liked how the seams kind of uh, fit. You know, like that's, as John always says, they're doing a really good job with hiding their seams. And they really are. Um, so, yeah. Oops, looks like that needs to dry. Um what is there to say about it? The thing is massive. Uh, and let's see, I, in putting it together, I put it together in parts, like I said I was going to. I ended up putting it together in more parts than I thought I would. Um, so here's the legs. You know, they fit on there really nicely. Uh, and then the torso. Now, this the unfortunate thing is um, I'm going to have to there's really little forgiveness, I think, with this figure. So you have to really put it together first and uh, make sure everything's setting right as you plop it together. Um, you know, there's there's very little wiggle room. So, you know, like you got to make sure that hand is perfect. And I think I'm going to be swearing when I actually glue the thing together in its final resting spot. Uh, looks like that shoulder kind of, there we go. Hopefully it'll stay. Um, Something that I thought was kind of interesting was looking at these, uh, uh, the thigh plates, was they connect kind of funny. Um, let's see. Oops. There we go. Ah. Uh, looks like the, the cloth right there. You know, we have it kind of glue there, and then it kind of wraps around. So this um, lines up nicely with that. So this is gonna, that's gonna lock it in place. Um, and I'm excited that I think the, uh, you know, all the cloth I could just do separately. So unfortunately, kind of like the Terminator guy, where I had to do some touch up, I'm gonna have to do some touch up. <laughs> so there it is. I'm gonna have to paint this, paint this, paint this separately, paint that separately. Um, and then uh, of course these are gonna plop in and out and then they will be painted separately as well. Okay, there's an order to this. I think there's a little nub, knob. Um, okay, yeah, you can see a little uh, knob right there. That goes on the bottom, so just make sure that's happening. And then, yep, that fits in there. That fits in there. Bam, hurricane bolters. Oh my gosh, this thing is so brutal. Love it. Um, I think that's all there is to say about that. So, yeah, let's get on to some paintings, right? All right, guys. So let's go ahead and start with some purple. Um, I'm going to throw in some regular Vallejo blue. I'm actually going to mix up a little bit more because I do have some other custodes I want to do. Um, so I'm kind of doing a two to one ratio. And then uh, Ferrari red, um, you can probably just do like regular red too if you like, but yeah, do a little, okay, I'm gonna add a little bit more, blow it out somewhere else, there we go. Mix, mix, mix. A nice dark. I think I might not have added enough red. Screw it. These guys are fast. Um, we need more red. They're secretly orcs. There we go. Okay. Pantaloons. Okay. 
give those a second. Gene Steeler Purple. Throw a few globs in here. Uh, I did leave some uh, previous purples, so it's going to make a, a smoother transition than what we did in the past with the Terminators. Let's see, oh yeah. Okay, so there's the front. Okay, let's let that chill for a bit. All right, let's just throw a little bit of Gene Steel of Purple in here. Not much. Okay. Okay, all right, let that sit. Okay, let's throw a little bit of that uh, the blue in here. We're gonna do up the power lance, the interceptor lance. Okay. Okay, throw in a little bit of this uh, light sea blue. Um, you can just use any blue, I don't know. I think this was the only light blue I had, but it doesn't matter. Okay, just a little bit. It's not gonna take much. Just a little spritz spritz. So I'm kind of getting at these uh, nodes, and I was kind of getting at the tip. So I'm focusing. Okay. Yeah, that's easy. On to the good part. Let's get with the copper. Yeah, put a decent amount in there. I think that's a lot of surface to cover. Okay. I'm just going to blow it in there. Put a, a special focus to... Uh, Kind of looking down on him. I mean, cover the whole thing, but really put more emphasis because you're looking for kind of like an added light source. I'm gonna enhance it. So, uh, and we're gonna hit that again with some other paints just to emphasize it even more. I really should get this over here. I think that's, let's get these, uh, okay, add some, um, gonna clean this out real quick. Relic or gold. Edges. All right, give that a moment. So before you toss all that, I did take a little bit of the paint out. Um, we're gonna add a little bit of uh, 
Runefang Steel uh, to the mix. And the gold overpowers the silver quite a bit, so you gotta make sure you have a decent amount in there. Um, I think we need some extra highlights because this is such like a, you know, there's a, there's a massive plane that we have to, um, our massive surface, massive flat surface, that we have to overcome. And so I think we're gonna stick to the shrouds and less the eagle with this. Um, okay, that way we are hopefully differentiating material types. Okay, uh, I show up on this shirt. Yeah, there we go. All right, I think it was looking good. Lead Bilcher, let's get into that bike. Um, you gotta make the thing presentable. Urgh. And I'm just gonna move this camera over. Okay. Um, so I think we're gonna get most of the uh, most of this engine. Um, a few things we're gonna leave are just a. Um, I don't know what this is. The reactor. We're gonna, we'll leave part of the reactor. going to leave that part of the seat. We're going to leave that alone. Um, but we'll get the, the tank. We'll get all this up here. This is going to take a bit, so I'm just going to do it off camera real quick, okay? And by real quick, I mean it's going to take me a long time, but you won't know. Okay, here we go. Uh, it's all taken care of. Um, we left some gold up there. We left a, oh gosh, um, I wish I hit that a little bit more with uh, some gold, but whatever, um, it'll be fine. We're going to hit it now with a bit of um, null oil. If you see, I left that, the little, um, I don't know, what, what do you call that, the power supply. Uh, gold, there's a couple little chunks here. Basically, I just followed what they did on the, uh, on the package. So, it's a little dull right now, but... I <laughs> I ran out of I uh, ran out of primer, so I just kind of painted black on there. And it's not as good as primer. So uh, for those of you who are not sure whether or not they could just spray paint black or not spray paint, but airbrush black instead of aerosol primer, aerosol primer is better. Just just in case you're curious. So let's go ahead and uh, hit all this, all the um, all the silver parts, just the silver parts, with, with null oil. Okay, I'm gonna do that and get back to you. So here's kind of what we did. Um, just hit all the silver, just dull it down a little bit. We're gonna go back and pick out details later. Um, but right now, let's go ahead and finish off that uh, um, all of our bit of, bit of, bit of, bit of gold. Uh, so let's start with some Agrac Earthshade. If you watch that uh, Terminator video, um, hopefully you'll kind of see what I want to do. So Agrax is going to give us our contrast, uh, and then we're going to go in with sepia later to bring back some of the colors. So we're going to go ahead and pull it into the the recesses a little bit. Not quite as a wash, but somewhat wash-ish. Um, but we are going to take a little bit of water, and we're going to feather it. So... See how that's kind of going in? So we're creating a gradient that's going to come out to the edge of the um, of these uh, fins. All right, there we go. So do that, um, and then we're also going to go into uh, some of these recesses here, here with the wings. And this is going to be a little bit more wash-like. We're not going to really pull it uh, too much. So let it go in. Boom. 
But when we get down here to the edge, we're gonna wipe it along the edge a little bit, um, and then kind of push it into sh to place. And get rid of it, feather it. There we go. So it's gonna create some nice little gradients. Um, so we're gonna do that kind of throughout here. So with all the feathers that you see, you know, hit it like a wash. Uh, if there's a fin, go ahead and feather it. All right, do that to the whole guy. Also, uh, I should say while you're at it, um, show you this so you can hit it all at the same time. Um, but a lot of these little lines, go ahead and uh, use a smaller brush and just kind of get in there a little bit. If you get too much, just wipe it off with your finger, but be pretty quick about it. Like it's not very forgiving. So uh, then let's come back and take a look. So uh, when you have the Agrax, um, I try to get around these little aquilas and stuff like that, just to kind of, and feather it, of course. But when you get your sepia, um, try to get it mostly in the uh, the recesses. You don't have to go around like all little filigree and everything. Um, we want the warm color just to be in in the shadows. Adding a little bit of water to it right here. Say water your paints down. What water your shades too? <laughs> Not always. Yeah, so go ahead and hit that. Um, you know, we're mostly looking for the shadows. And then let's see how it goes. Okay. What do you think? Is it starting to starting to come along? I really love it. Like once you start getting like that uh, uh the sepia in there, like then it starts to come together in my opinion. So real quick, let's um uh get some a close quarters dry brush. We're gonna get some rune fang silver. Uh and we're gonna kinda touch up the um, the gas tank, the not gas tank, is probably not gas. Um, and then we're gonna paint a lot of this black, but let's just go ahead and hit it real quick. We don't wanna do too much, but we do kind of some of the contact areas. Brighten that up a little bit. Okay, that's about all we want to do. Not too much. Um, then the center console is going to be black. So let's go ahead and get uh, black and gray ready. Let's see, we got some Mechanicus and our Chaos Black that we've had for 20, 30 years. Um, so we're going to go back and forth real quick because we're going to do a little bit of wet blending. So be ready. All right. I'm going to take this off the stand. It doesn't hurt to add a little bit of water to this guy. That's too much. I got some or something I want to keep silver. There it is again. Okay, ready? So right where we're going to feather it, put a little bit more black, and rush right over there to the gray. And then start working it in. There we go. Yeah. A little bit more gray. All 
All right, let's hold that set. Okay, so let's do the uh, that center instrument. Um, start with some green, and this is uh, Warpstone Glow. And then we got this uh, um, Iraqi Sand. Um, this, let's go ahead and I'm gonna squirt out a little bit of this. If you have like an ochre color, ochre color, uh, or something like that, like that would be a good alternative. Um, and I mean, you could be like kind of flesh tone-ish. Um, I always hate using the word flesh tone because we don't all have the same flesh tone. But anyway, we're gonna we're gonna put this this green on here, uh, and we're gonna almost glob it on. We're gonna do like a a nice thick coat, um, and then we're gonna be kind of wet blending that ochre color in. Oh, I'm gonna need a little bit of water. There we go. Okay, nice and globbed. Looks like I got in the recesses when I didn't want to. All right, let's bring our ochre color in. Bring it in the top. And kind of push it around. Uh, maybe a little bit in the bottom. Let's bring a little bit more of our warpstone glow in the center. Bring back the green. Looks like it's getting a little thin over here. Okay. All right, let's uh, let that sit for a few minutes. Okay, all right, little daub. And let's get a, a super fine brush. Shoot. Okay, here we go. It's an ochre. Um, by this point, it should be, I mean, it's like, it's drying up a little bit, so we're not, Putting on a super detailed or super thick coat. I hope. See, um, a little bit of white, and that could be the gleam on the instrument. There we go. I usually just hit the buttons with a little bit of white as well. Might tone it down. You know what? I'm gonna throw a little bit of that Iraqi sand in here just to see what happens. And put a little bit more white at the top. Yeah, I kind of like that. I like that little off-white bottom of the button. I'm gonna do that with the rest. I realized I was sinking to the left a little bit. Okay, yeah, all right, it's looking like something. All right, so uh, we have been adding that Iraqi sand, I had the ochre um, color to a lot of the um, like hand grips. So let's go ahead and just do that, just to make it consistent. And this is gonna be kind of a three step process. So we'll put this on, we'll let it dry, and then we'll put a wash over it, and then we'll go back in and touch it up and get the highlights. Mm. 
All right, let it chill. All right, let's get some uh, Seraphim sepia. Now we're gonna hit those handles. This might actually not be the right color. We might need to Agrax or shade this guy. I don't know, it'll, it'll be fine. No, it'll be fine. This is good. I think when we do the highlights, it'll really pop. Yeah, all right, that's it. We are super close to being done with this bike. So more rocky sand and we're gonna touch up the highlights. Uh, get a really fine um, brush and it's just gonna go over. Let's grab a couple of the highlights. Yeah, looks good. Okay. Um, so the next thing we're gonna do is, let's get these uh, um, those little cogs. Let's get the cogs going on. Uh, and then we're gonna do some highlights and call this thing done, at least the bike. So I'm gonna grab some black and some white. So they're going a little bit inverse. So we're gonna do uh, the skull Skull is going to be half black, half white. And then do the cog is the opposite. Having a hard time with the light. Okay. And the white. Start with the skull. Oh, too much. Start with the skull. Do the cog. Okay, and make just a little bit of gray. And we'll highlight. Oops, too much. Ah, so tough. That's close enough. All right, do the other side. How about the seat? How about the seat? Uh, all right, so I'm gonna get this tan shadow ready. Uh, just dollop. And then um, we got the burnt umber. Uh, all right. So we're gonna do a little bit of the wet blending. It's not gonna be too bad. Um, yeah, that's the brush I want. I just realized I didn't do the handle, the misericordia. I should have done that when I did the handlebars. So use the same process for the handlebars as you do the misericordia, and I'll be happy. So if you're looking for my approval, that's how you get it. Okay, so I'm gonna do just the top part real quick, and then I'll do the rest off camera. Wet blend to the edges. That's it. All right, do that for the rest and then we'll take a look. Okay, there's a little bit of blending on there. Uh, we still have that tan shadow. And let's just go ahead and make a few little lines. We're just gonna stress this up a little bit. Mostly get the back, cause I think that's gonna be probably the more visible area. up a little bit back there. Ah. 
Ah, shit. <laughs> There we go. I think I just a little bit of something to it. Okay, I think we're on to uh, the silver. Rune foam. All right, we're gonna touch up a lot of the uh, all these metal bits. So let's kind of bounce along the edge a little bit. I don't know if you watched my Terminator video, but. Um, you don't want to make a straight line. Uh, I, I like to use the highlights as an opportunity to put on wear. So you're kind of picking out the odd highlight, but also kind of jostle it and make little slashes. Don't be too consistent. If you put like a little blob there, that's fine. Seen that? Here, let's see if we can zoom in a little bit. Yeah, like that. And that's just shaking it just a little bit and getting it, you know. Oops, I didn't show you anything, did I? Give me that handle. Yeah, we're gonna kind of do that with all the silver. So take your time and make it look worn up. There it is. A little bit of wear and tear on there. Okay. So now I think the one of the last steps for this bike is going to be taking that uh, some gold and we're going to mix a little bit of that, um, that silver in. Take a big old glop of gold. Oh boy, that doesn't look like enough. Okay, I'm probably gonna mix up too much. And wash that off. Get some rune fang. And you probably wanna go about two to three parts. Uh, silver, so you want to, it has to be more silver since that gold tends to run the show. I just wish I could find like a, just a good paint out of the can or pot like that. I'm sure it's out there. Okay, so then we're going to do the exact same thing with the gold. Take a couple little slashes once in a while. All right, just do that for a little bit all over the bike. And I particularly focus around where the driver would be and where maybe you hit things or something brush up against things, right? Okay, so there we are. We've got a little bit of scraping and wear going on there. We are, uh, okay, so what we have to do, fix that mysocordia uh, handle and we'll uh, do some exhaust um, and call it good. All right, so I totally forgot that uh, that mysocordia has little gems on it. So get a nice uh, ultramarine blue. Uh, where are we at? There we are. And get in there. Really glop it on. And get a l much lighter blue. I don't know what you'd call this, but. 
uh, kind of focus more on the bottom. And then we're going to kind of wet blend it a little bit. Oops. A little bit more ultramarine blue. Okay. There you go. And then um, we'll just hit like a little dollop of white on there. I think. Dollop. Done. To the other side. Back in my day, we didn't have a stippling brush. It was just any old brush. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna get. We're gonna do some stippling. So get some uh, some flat black. Actually, this brush might be too um, too hard. All right, let's see how it works. You know, I haven't used this brush before, so it's a uh, it's a little. Uh, you know what? We need a softer brush. Okay, <laughs> softer brush. Um, you know, I'm, I'm I'm sure it's a I'm sure it's a nice brush, uh, but. Yeah, there we go. So we got the the exhaust set. Yeah, there we go. You could airbrush this on too. And actually that's what I'd prefer to do, but I'm just it's getting late. <laughs> but we have another trick uh to kind of drive it home and add something to it. Okay, so um, now the next step, this is gonna really jam it. Um, we have, there is a pigment. Where did I put that pigment? Oh, there it is, okay. So we have this pigment, it's a black pigment. Uh, no need to shake it like I was about to. So let's get the brush that we use for the pigments. And this is carbon. Okay. There we go. This one's real subtle. Um, you know, like some of the other pigments that I use are a little bit more obvious. There we go. Yeah. I think it's looking good. Right? Yeah, that's proper. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and hit the base. I wanna finish the base and then get that thing mounted and then we'll have a, uh, basically we'll have a stand that we could use to paint the guy. So, um, do that and then we have the, um, we'll do, do Mechanica standard. <sighs> um, Get a big fat dry brush. Take this peg out. Okay, dry brush. I used to love dry brushing as a kid. That was my jam. Something more, something gratifying about just running the brush over uh, some texture and having it having the details just pop out. Okay. Then I think we have that uh, slanish gray laying around here. Nope, where'd it go? Slanish gray. Has like a slight purple to it. I'm not super happy with, but it works. A lot of my bases, um, I use just like found objects on there. So we have like pieces of wood that I pulled out of the yard. And then there's um, some of these uh, runic things. Actually a buddy of mine made those. Um, I mean, I think he has like a, he, he makes them out of Fimo and then breaks them all up so they're clumps of debris. Yeah, there we go. Um, I think for those, uh, for those runes, um, real quick, I want to, 
Oops, I think I grabbed the wrong brush. Um, let's go ahead and add a little bit of um, white. We're just gonna stipple this on real quick. We're gonna, let's mix it with that gray. There we go. All right, so looking like that so far. Um, <clears throat> we'll do some uh, Screaming Skull for the, we can slam this uh, base out real quick, I think. Um, <sighs> get the inside of the tree branches. Okay, I think that's about good for that. Um, let's get some brown. Um, let's see. Just like a medium brown of some sort. And this will be the uh, inner skin of the tree. Or the inner bark, rather. There we go. Okay. Um, then, let's see what else. Let's grab, uh, I think we have that linen white. We're gonna pick out a couple uh, rocks. Come on, you. There we go. Oops. Okay, let that sit. Agrax or shade. Okay, where's a good brush for that? And you can get sloppy with this, it's okay. You don't have to get it everywhere. Oops. Let's get some on the ground here. You know what? I think I'm going to use some uh, seraphim as well. Curious to see what happens with that. Yeah, I think I like the seraphim a little bit more. It's a little bit uh, muddier. Oops, make sure it doesn't get on that. Okay, and let it dry. Okay, let's go on to the legs. Um, we gotta do the easy part first. Uh, just get a little bit of gold and hit the armored parts. Uh, they did leave the legs cloth-like. Um, I read an interview with the um, the designer and he said that he wanted, I think it was Ali Morrison maybe? Uh, a legend uh, in the, the design world, but um, I think he was saying that uh, he wanted them to look kind of lean, kind of limber, uh, but still have like that armored feel. So he, he chose to go with a, a cloth um, cloth leg. Maybe it's so he could uh, quickly maneuver the foot pedals or whatever. Um, so that's cool. All right. This is probably gonna take a, a couple a couple of coats. Uh, usually with these metallics, they could they don't go on the first time really well, especially on a dark color. 
uh, lead belcher. You know, usually that one's a good one, but okay. So let's give this a second to dry and we'll come back to it. Okay, let's get some brown out. Uh, hit those legs. Okay, ah, a little bit more. This bottle's finally running out. I've had this thing, this bottle for, God, I don't know, 20 years? <laughs> Maybe not that long. Over 10, I'm sure. Finally getting to the bottom. Uh, I'll try this brush. All right, we're gonna do the gaiters. No, okay. And shadow. This is where it gets fun. Do a little bit of that wet blending you love so much. Ah, okay, here we go. Yeah. There we go, okay. Do that to the other side while I tend to the puppy. So I guess we kind of should have done this in a different <laughs> um, So we could have done the, the the gators first and then the gold second because we're gonna hit the uh, those gators again a little bit of gold on the buckles that way when we hit these with the brown we can do it all at once okay give it a second and then we'll hit the brown Egg reaction! Back in the house! Okay, so I think with this, uh, we're gonna mostly try to hit the recesses. So I guess we could start in the back. I guess. If we have to, whatever. Okay, I'm gonna get the water. It'll be faster than this. Oops, that was way too much. There we go. Yeah, there we are. I get that water. Okay. And we'll get the behind. Behind. Oops. Ah, ah, fingers. Ah, hand. All right, let it chill for a sec. I'm being ridiculous. I totally forgot we gotta hit the, uh, the gold too. All right, now I can chill. I get some silvers, lead belchers, those little knobby bits, knobby bits, knobby bits. Uh, let's see, two more, three more. Then. Let's get this uh, wiring or mesh or whatever the heck it is over here. Can you see that? There we go. Well, it looks like there's some in the back. Ah. Okay, I kind of want to get that belt buckle a little bit. Let's just get the, the spheres on the outside. Okay, cool. 
Let it chill and we'll oil it. How about them booty boots? Let's get your get that and <laughs> where does it go? Here we go. I kind of come. Ah, that's the wrong one. Uh, okay. Booty boots. You know, blinky black. Ah, I should have this open. There we go. Okay, so now that's about right. I can do it to the other side. All right, we're gonna glue this bad boy in place. Doop, just a little bit of glue. Just a little bit of glue. Not too much or, I don't know, whatever. Okay. Then we can get our tan shadow. Uh, do a little bit of stressing on the um, on the gr the gators. Gators. Uh, it's drying too fast. See that? Okay, do it to the other side. Okay, let's get a little bit of gold out. And we're going to touch up these plates. By touch up, I mean paint them <laughs> initially. Uh, just slathered on. We're not really worried too much about the... Uh, highlights and stuff just yet. We'll get to that later. This is probably going to take about two coats, so um, we'll go and cut away from it. Um, and uh, yeah, do that thing. Uh, okay, let's do a little bit of that Agrax or shade we love so much. Uh, yeah, I don't know if you noticed, but there's a torso inching closer. Okay, so we're just kind of giving this like a general wash. We'll flip it over and do the bottom. And yeah, dude, this is great because we're so close. <laughs> this has been, yeah, like, I mean, this is, uh, you know, whenever I do a video, it takes the painting a little bit longer, but it's, uh, it's taken a bit, not just because of the video, because it, it's taking a bit, <laughs> but I don't know. It's it's looking dope. I am so happy with it. So uh, let's give that a second to dry. All right, you know what we're gonna do next. Sepia. Okay. So let's. Yeah, we're just gonna kind of start at the top. We're not gonna fully come down. Um. Just gonna create just a something of a gradient. I mean, there's so much going on in here. Like, of course we can't. Yeah, you know, do a, a nice, a clean gradient, but I just hit it at the top and call it good. You know what? While we're at it, let's grab a itty bitty brush, get that jean stealer purple, and um, let's go ahead and add a little bit of texture to this. 
itty bitties. Let's get a little bit closer in there. Okay, I hope you can see that. Just a little subtles. Yeah, just a little bit more. Okay, so let's, I, I, I took the liberty of gluing him on. Um, and uh, just to let you know, I don't know if you could tell, but I had to, um, I had to bend this uh, handlebar out just a little bit to match his hand. I actually shaved the inside of his torso to kind of move him over that way a little bit, but it still didn't quite line up. <clears throat> and even though I had lined him up earlier, it just didn't stay. So that's just the way it goes. So if you have to, bend it out just a little bit just to make it happen. Or in, whichever. Um, so we're going to go and paint the color on his shoulder pad. Uh, we'll grab some of, um, is, what is that, Zarius purple. And then we got our Gene Stealer cult purple. Our Gene Stealer purple. So let's start with that. Um... Nice to see it, huh? Okay, so now that we got that in there, um, we're going to get our Gene Stealer Cult purple ready and then we're going to go back and just moisten this up a little bit um, don't glop it on too much like I just did <laughs> um, yeah go ahead and spread it in nice and thin just get it wet and then we're going to do a little bit of wet blending with this gene stealer purple there we go bit hard to see. I might have to touch that up actually. I think it's uh it's wetting the layer on the bottom. There we go. Yeah. Okay. Alright. So let it chill for a second and we'll figure out what to do next. Guys, this is <laughs> we are coming down to the end here. Um or at least it feels like it. So Let's grab a little bit of that brown, um, and we're going to start getting into his uh, wrist guards. Um, looks like they go almost all the way up to the end of his arm. Uh, so where were we? We were trying to get this uh, these road leathers down. Okay, so um, remember we're gonna we're gonna wet blend this. Uh, so get your tanned or whatever. Um, so let's wet this bad boy up a little bit, and then pull some of this down. There we go. Okay. 
All right, let's let that dry for about two seconds. Drag back to our shade, baby. Let's get in there. Uh, I'm just gonna kind of slather this, uh, then we'll clean it up later. There we go. Cool. Let's let it chill. Drag back to our shade, baby. Let's get in there. Uh. I'm just going to kind of slather this. Uh, then we'll clean it up later. There we go. Cool. Let's let it chill. So apparently that whole freaking lance is <laughs> is black. Ugh. Painting black is the worst. Um, okay, so we got our mechanical gray. We got our black. Uh, and we're going to hit that bad boy. You know what? We should probably start at the back. The underside of this thing. That way it's freshest on top. Where we're going to wet blend. Blah, 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 getting sloppy. Okay. Getting to the point where we're gonna have to wet blend, so get ready. And flip. Okay. Uh... <laughs> I'm not really wet blending at that point, am I? Just kinda getting messy now. Okay, so let's kind of focus on the edge a little bit and feather it down. There we go. Okay, let's spruce this up a little bit and then drag it down. Yeah, dude, this is looking good. Pretty happy with it. Okay. Now, um, I think it's time to get some lead belcher. Let's hit up the silver parts that we've neglected for so, so long. Okay, so we'll start with the face plate. Start up top and work our way down. Oops, why don't I show you what I'm doing, huh? Um, okay. There we go. All right, then we'll do the, the chesticles. Put all those cables down in there. Ah, it's getting late. I'm getting sloppy. I think this has taken me about four or five days. Granted, I've had a lot of homework, so I haven't been able to focus too much on it, but yeah, it's been a grip. Okay, I think that's about it for the body. Now let's go ahead and get the weapon. Okay, I'll switch over to another brush. A bit more intense here. Yeah, there we go. Slather it on. You know what? I think I should probably get the backside of that lance too with the black. I hope you're seeing some of this. Okay. All right, that's enough of that brush. Let's go back to the other one. Clean up. Okay, and what else do we have to do? Look at the picture. Um, yeah, it looks like we're doing uh. this. Get the end of it. 
I kind of wonder what that little bit is that just kind of plops right there. Because I, I notice that it's on Power Fist and a lot of other things. Like, is it a connector? Um, is it uh, an electrode? Like, what exactly? It's a consistent piece in a lot of G the power weapon designs. At least when it comes to Terminators. So it must, it must have some purpose. Or maybe it's just consistency for consistency's sake. Not a intended thing. Okay, almost there. Okay. Let's shut this down. And before we get too much further, let's go back and do that, uh, the shroud on the back of that handle. Sometimes hard to get the right angle. I'm just going to be a little bit reckless with this and knowing that I'm going to touch it up later. Being reckless. Okay, a little, a little bit of the gray. That's a little reckless. There we go. I don't really like it edge highlights too much, but I'm gonna throw one on there. There we go. That's something. Ask if you guys want to do some Agrax Earthshade, but you know, sometimes you have to show a little uh, restraint. Almost there. So, if we do this, uh, a little bit of the blood red, then we can do some Agrax Earthshade. Is that okay, kids? Okay, here it is. I'm focusing mostly on the bottom of this plume. I might get some on the top, but for the most part, it's staying down below. Okay. Just about there. I just noticed a little detail that they uh, put on armor shoulder pad or elbow and. Uh, a little whatchamajig, and what do you call it, like a, a armored elbow plate, if you can see it. Kind of right in there. It's on that side, but not on that side. 
I guess that's the, the business arm. Um, okay, so let's let that chill for a little bit and then we'll come back for a little bit of Carrot Top Red. Uh, doo -doo -doo, where is that Carrot Top Red? It's gonna go on his head. This one actually feathers in quite nicely. Like it doesn't take it up. Uh, it doesn't take a lot of wet blending to get it to look good. Okay, I think that's good. All right, so um, <clears throat> we have a little bit of null oil we have to do, right? Remember that? Remember that? Uh, no, we don't actually. We have some lead belcher because I forgot about little knobby bits right here. And more than likely on the other side. Shoom. Nope, not the other side. Okay, now we can null oil. Stay open, you bastard. Dirty hooker. Okay. <clears throat> so, we have the faceplate. Do one side at a time. Um, then where else do we have to do? Oh yeah, we still have his sides, and then we have that little tube right there. A tube right there. <clears throat> and we have a bunch of stuff on his lance. Okay. And then a little bit. Ah, it's getting sloppy. Past my bedtime. Okay, so something I keep forgetting is that uh, the uh, the handle, I gotta do that handle. Okay, so let's let this dry a little bit and then um, we'll hit the handle. Dude, it is coming along really nicely. Where did we leave off? I think we were sepia, uh, I was gonna say sepia tone, seraphim sepia, right? Get a little bit of color back in this, bro. Okay. All right. So, um, let's get, no, I think we were going to do the, uh, yeah, we were going to do the handle, weren't we? Oh, well, that's fine. So we're going to start with, we're going to put the sepia kind of down into the recesses a little bit. Try to put some color into the shadows. Uh, there we go. Nope. Bottle keeps wanting to close. There we go. Drag a little bit down into his pad. I think that's it, right? Okay. Okay, let's let that relax. Let it relax and we can do the handle. Okay. We don't need them to be dry for this. Ah, looks like my paint is soupy. All right, it's gonna take a few coats. I'm gonna shake it up well enough. Do that. Kind of in the tedious cleanup stage now. Uh, that's when you like go through and you're like, fuck, did I forget something? 
and then you go along, and you're like, fuck, I forgot something else. Okay, so uh, I think what we ought to do is spend a, little, a moment and hit up some spots where I miss. So, for instance, this elbow pad, I forgot to paint it gold. There we go. Um, let's see another one. You know what? We got these uh, little ribs on our lance. Let's do those. Ah, totally not even showing you that. Okay. Damn. Getting into it and completely ignoring the camera. Okay, and then I think that's, oh yeah, 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 we got the buckles on the, yeah. God, I should have done these before we did the wash. And then finally, I say finally, but I'm sure there'll be other things. Um, let's do the fingers real quick. Oh, almost there. Okay, so let's get a little bit of sepia uh, into that handle. If it overlaps into everything else, that's fine. And then I may as well pull it into the, uh, the elbow pad. And then uh, let's go ahead and bring it into the buckles a little bit. All right. All good. Oh boy. So, um, oops. <laughs> I, when I, uh, put the uh, seraphim the uh, sepia on the handle was this the Iraqi sand was not quite dry so that's a problem it uh, got a little muddled but that's okay because uh, once we get these highlights um, it'll look good so that's kind of what we got to do now we're gonna do it anyway it's just Sometimes you look at it and you're like, crap, I screwed up, like I just did. And then a moment later, you're like, oh, well, it's not big of a deal. So that's, it's just that, um, that an immediate dissatisfaction. So there we go. I think that'll work out. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't take much. All right, so next step is, um, you know, I'm gonna get a couple more of these. And then, so then the next step is going to be, um, I think getting the silver in. No, but first, uh, yeah, yeah, let's get the, let's get a little rune fang steel. Touch up that, ooh, cat hair all over. It's a jungle up in my house. Uh, all right. And kind of hit the eyes a little bit. And remember, we're not doing like a simple line. We're kind of jagging a little bit. It's got to look kind of like where. Okay. And then come in here. I'm just going to hit a little bit along those handles, looking a little bit dull. Um, okay, I think that's about it. 
So uh, let's go ahead and mix up, uh, gonna mix up some of that rune fang along with some gold. So a little bit more gold. Yeah, it's not too bad. It's a little silver heavy, heavy, but that's okay. Okay. Okay, and then down by a thigh. Cool. And then while we're at it, let's just uh let's give a little bit of highlight to that rim. Yeah. So let's see. Okay, cool. Um, let's give it a second, and uh, I think we're onto some gems. Close. I can taste it. it. Tastes like victory. Gem, and there's a million gems. Hello, million gems. What were these guys called? The Ten Thousand Suns. I think it should be the Million Gems. Okay. Oops, one more, two more. Okay. There we go. Okay. Um, we're gonna get a little bit of white, and uh, and then I think there's like one more step after this. Okay, there it is. <laughs> Get my ISO, fix my ISO. There we are. Glowy gems. <laughs> okay, let's take a second. Shadow. And let's uh, stress the leather. Uh, get the ISO back. No. <laughs> All right, I think that's good. And there it is. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Um, yeah, I think like the last couple of these, uh, the Terminator and this guy, it seems like, uh, you know, I started out with hesitation, like, oh man, gold, what can you possibly do with it? But I think that there's so many different things you can, um, or rather it forces you to do just to kind of get a little bit of variance, you know, you're, kind of stuck with like, well, it's gold. I can put a couple highlights on it and 
call it good. And, you know, like a lot of the, uh, a lot of people I see are doing just that. Uh, and even Games Workshop, I think like they don't put too much variance in it. Uh, I mean, there's still a lot of depth when they do it, you know, but I think that, you know, you can, you can push it as far as you want, you know, by throwing on like added details and, and changing the color values and the stuff of the gold. It's, it's not just gold, you know, <laughs> like you could paint an ultramarine and make it just blue or you could like change it up, you know, like, do you put dirt on his, his legs? Do you put, you know, soot on his gun? You know, like there are ways of, of making it more interesting. And so that, I appreciate the challenge of painting uh, a gold super soldiers <laughs> for it, you know, like it really kind of pushes me as a, uh, as a painter. So um, yeah, I love the design on this. Like, I love how brutal it looks. Like, honestly, like I like the bikes that Forge World came out with, but I like these more. You know, they're just something about that, like that big brutish front end. And um, there are a couple of like, learning curves along the way. Um, I felt that there's a, you know, there's a gap uh, right up here that I wish I had taken care of, you know, right in between the eagle. Um, you know, I was kind of expecting it just to kind of go together smoothly. Um, and maybe it would in other respects, but in this respect, it, it didn't. So that might have been my bad as a, as a, a modeler. Um, also, another thing. I found is that um, in the gap, um, you know, where you put the peg, uh, there's, you know, you have the circle where it kind of, like the hole, um, you know, it like kind of, and then there's like a, like a band uh, on the back side. Um, so basically like here's your contact points and the band is your contact point. And the band, you know, it's like clamshell. Um, so the band is uh, glued here. And I wish I had glued the band. I didn't, I just like glued the exterior of the bike. Um, and because of that, I ended up having, to, I, uh, I had to glue the peg to the bike, uh, cause otherwise it just wasn't sticking. And originally, like when I was saying that I was going to put some blue tack on these, like the blue tack wasn't enough. So, um, it did take some uh, glue in order to make it happen, but that's something I learned from this kit. So you can go ahead and, uh, glue it properly and see what happens. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe it is a design flaw, but for the most part, um, I don't know. It's, it, it worked out. So yeah, guys, um, I hope you like this. Uh, go ahead and uh, paint up some gold bikes. All right. Take care, man.